Ivanović Vanki, posta asisti Stanko. E, pijaču! Ljubav ti je tvoj kura Donija Vrića, jel' Donija dovoljno za mene za tebe? This is a game that been played in Europe in that border country way back in seventh century. I read the history. So we really played that in Yugoslavia mostly every day. People play it. Eh? Oh yeah, my heart still beats for the for a country over there, but it's a long time, I'm 56 years now here, and uh, 46 years married. Bravo, bravo, bravo! Do a lot of Slavonians in the oyster business down here? Mostly Slavonia, biggest majority, I mean. Uh, every now and then there's a lot of Americans get in, but they don't stay long. Uh, it, it's hard work. Who, who made some point? Who? How much? Seven. Oh, come on. Huh? Seven, yeah. They made seven? The judge had an excellent uh, relationship with the Slavonians. There are very few Slavonian people who didn't like the judge. He left them alone a lot. Uh, they would fight back if, if they were abused. He knew that character in me. He never would abuse, I, I don't know of any Slavonian that he's abused. Uh, uh, the Slavonians, all they wanted to do was let alone. Many of them were not well educated. They had three or four years of education at the most. They were laborers, either fishermen or, or laborers and they came into the land with the golden door. If they got in some foray over oyster boundaries or uh, poaching of oysters or uh, problems with the state in connection with health, they talked to the judge about it, see? He was district attorney. He was the arbiter, he was the power. He would, he would, he would arbitrate, you see, and he, would, he had a, a way of, of pleasing them, you see? Basically, the people simply looked up to him because he was considered their leader. It didn't take a great deal of uh, education to have an advantage there. It was a very rural parish. Perez could not have become a leader in a more sophisticated area, such as New York or Washington or London. People would have laughed at him. But instead, in Plaquemine, he was greatly admired. So what does that say about the people? It says that the people were poor and desperate, and very dependent knew very little about politics, were apathetic, and he used them. Well, as I said, Plaquemine was a poor parish with very few resources, but in the 1930s, something happened. They discovered oil. Beneath the homes of these animals in the marsh lies the black gold of the golden parish. In 1933, the name Plaquemine Parish was echoing throughout the United States as black gold was discovered. Now, not many people knew that there was all beneath all that marsh, but Leander Perez knew, and he took advantage of it. Much of the oil was under marshland which once belonged to the state, it was now controlled by parish levy boards, to whom Leander Perez was legal advisor. He was legal advisor to the police jury, which also dealt with the lands. He was also attorney for the people who leased the lands. In other words, he was playing both sides of the street. He made himself a millionaire in the process. Uh, there were millions and millions of dollars of oil beneath Plaquemine Parish. And it's still, it's still there today. It's still producing. Plaquemine this year will receive more than $11 million in uh, oil field royalties, which is uh, equivalent to the entire operating budget of St. Bernard Parish, which is right adjacent and uh, more than twice as large. 
Now, I've looked at the budget, and uh, you have, and uh, there's a number by every name, and there's an accounting for every penny. But um, it boggles the mind to think that uh, Plaquemine Parish has existed for all these many years with that much money. The idea always has been in Louisiana populist politics. Uh, you give everybody something. You what give them something that they need. The uh, parish uh, sheriff's department will uh, give you all sorts of part-time commissions, and uh, there are all kinds of little jobs that people can do, and the parish government has a hefty payroll. And uh, that, a la Henry Ford, they're in the system. How do they knock it down when they're part of it? Tell me, tell me about your job as the, the alligator nuisance. Uh, what's that called again? <laughs> Nuisance alligator control agent. That's just in case somebody has an alligator and it's bothering them in their carport or in their yard. Maybe eating their chickens or ducks. I'm supposed to go and remove it off the premises. Does that happen a lot? Uh, quite a few times a year. About two weeks ago, this woman was down there washing her car in a car wash, and a nine foot alligator came up through the drain and came under her automobile. So she had a nuisance alligator. 